servant leadership many times is not enough. If you've ever heard the phrase necessary but not sufficient in mathematics or in science, it's really necessary that we do all of these things for our team, these servant leadership te things for our team, but we can't forget that we also need to provide them with vision, with direction. Jason LaDuke, back with you here, helping you become the kind of boss you always wish you had when you were first starting out. And today we're gonna to continue our discussion of different leadership styles like we've been doing for the last few weeks. And remember, as we're talking about these leadership styles, we're talking about which leadership styles do we adopt in certain situations, which techniques do we use to handle certain kinds of problems. When we're doing these leadership styles, we don't ever want to fall into or gravitate towards one leadership style. Yes, we have something natural that we will kind of gravitate to, but we also want to make sure that we're using all the tools available and adopting different leadership styles when they make the most sense. And today what we're gonna talk about is a really good component of leadership styles, and that's servant leadership. What servant leadership is, it's basically enabling your team, enabling your employees, giving them all the tools and resources they need, listening to their problems, helping them solve their problems, showing a lot of empathy, making them feel safe, and also, which we always talk about on here and on the other types of content we do out of this podcast, is developing future leaders. Servant leadership is focused on all of those things, and it's really, really good to do this with all of your people as much of the time as possible. You'll see a lot of church leaders, a lot of community leaders talk about being servant leaders. And this style of leadership works really well when you're ministering to a congregation, working with a nonprofit, trying to build community, because it is fostering that feeling of safety, that feeling of belonging, that empathy, that listening that it takes to build a really strong team and help them feel safe to go do what they need to do. Now, what I will say about servant leadership is that there's a couple traps you can fall into with servant leadership. And the way I view it is we should be doing all these things for our team all the time, but servant leadership many times is not enough. If you've ever heard the phrase necessary but not sufficient in mathematics or in science, it's really necessary that we do all of these things for our team, these servant leadership things for our team, but we can't forget that we also need to provide them with vision, with direction, with an objective to go after. And while this can be really great when you are working with a team and they're doing kind of the same thing day to day over and over again, and you're just trying to get things running smoothly and efficiently and make sure that the team has no problems that they can't handle on their own. It's really, really hard when a change comes along, when it's time to bring about a change, when it's time to enforce something new. Servant leadership isn't always enough. We have to go back to some of the other leadership styles we've talked about where we're trying to drive change, where we're trying to provide motivation and inspiration to our team and get them going in the right direction, get them going in a new direction. And the components of servant leadership, while really great to use all of the time, sometimes just aren't enough to get people moving in a new direction or getting through a crisis when it comes up. I remember when I was a captain in the Air Force and I was a brand new flight commander for the first time. And I had a, another captain working for me in the flight and she was doing some very, very important flight tests in our squadron, kind of the two most important flight tests we had going on at the time. And she very much gravitated towards a servant leadership kind of style. And so she was very enabling to our team, her team. She would listen to them. She would listen to their problems. She would help them get resources. But ultimately what happened was her team didn't really know where they were going, what the, what the vision was, what the direction was for this flight test program that she was working on. And a couple of them came to me and said, hey, we really need to talk to you because we don't really know what we're supposed to be doing. And so we all kind of sat down together. We talked about how it's important to have a vision, have an objective, and that's the leader of the team's job is to set that, that vision, that objective, and to drive things forward. And so if servant leadership is something that you gravitate to, if it sounds really good to you, and it should, as we've said, there's a lot of really good qualities here. Don't forget that sometimes as a leader, when things are just not kind of moving along day to day in the same rhythm and routine, we all need to kind of drive drive the train forward a little bit, provide some direction, provide some motivation, provide some inspiration. 
and use that along with our servant leadership style. Now you've got one more set of techniques to add to your leadership style as you're moving forward. If this was helpful, please like, comment, and share. Send it on to someone else who can use it. If you have any experiences with servant leadership where it's worked or has not worked, where it's been a good experience or a not so good experience, share with us in the comments. We'd love to hear your stories. If you have any questions for me, slide into my DMs. I don't mind. I hope this has been helpful to you in developing your leader's mindset onward and upward.